Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Pietro Kevin and today you will see 6 simple tutorials in less than 10 minutes. Without any further ado, let's jump into it. For the first two tutorials of this video, I'm gonna cover two topics of a tutorial I did on my channel, the kernels of Utrecht. You can find the link here somewhere. And uh, in this video I will especially talk about uh, the creation of the water shader and the creation of the particle system for the falling leaves. So let's start with the animated water shader, create a new material, uh, give it a name and then uh, in the shader panel enable the use node. At this point we are good to go for the material setup. So first of all I added a texture coordinate and I linked it to a mapping vector. So from generated to vector. Then from here, I link the vector to two separate noise texture. And these elements here are basically the key parts of the animated shader, since they are the key parts to animate the shader. Then I link both the noise shader to two different bump. And consequentially, I link it to the mix RGB. From here, I just linked it to the normal input of the principal shader. Now we are ready to set up the parameter that actually makes the animation of the uh, water. So going back in the noise texture nodes, we have to set the dimension to 4D. For the creation of the moving shader, we need to define the scale of the noise texture. Here, what you need to keep in mind is that the first value on the noise texture should be the double in a minus sign in the second noise texture. So if the first one is 25,000, the scale on the second noise texture should be minus 50,000. Then you need to set this keyframe in the timeline. So in order to add a keyframe, you have to right click of the mouse on the value and add keyframe and do it for both the noise texture, the latest frame of the timeline, in this case is uh, 250. And here we need to invert those values. So minus 50 in the first noise texture, 25,000 in the second right. noise texture. Once again, we need to add a keyframe on the timeline. So we, in this way we can tell Blender, okay, in this moment I want this parameter and the, in this other moment, in this other frame, I want this other parameter. And then when you play the animation, those parameters will change during the full length of the range that we defined, creating this sort of illusion. Okay, tutorial number two, we are going to talk about the following leaves of the video. Um, the first thing we need to do is to create the leaf that will be emitted by the particle system. Um, you can create like a plane and apply a leaf texture, or like I'm doing here, um, create a simple leaf uh, shape. Uh, I, this one will be my particle. Uh, then uh, what we need to do, uh, what I'm going to show you is to create a simple plane with the collision uh, effect applied. So when the fallen leaves will collide with this plane, it actually will not go through the plane. Um, that's quite simple. You need to do it in the collision is to set the damping friction in to be 1000. After that, we can start to work on the particle system itself. So. Let's create another plane and let's uh, hit the plus sign on the particle system panel in order to create a particle system for this plane. Uh, one of the very first thing to do is to change the distance object to be the leaf or uh, the plane of the leaf that you have and then set the scale to be 1000. For the physics, uh, the mass should be around one to five gram and then set the randomness to be 0. 0.500. I also enabled the rotation and randomized it to 0.500. At this point, the plane should already emit in particles. Now we choose the way to animate the leaves. So you can add like a force field wind in order to have this effect specific direction, or you can animate the plane in the timeline. Now, one of the first thing that we can notice is that the leaves disappear really quickly and at a at some point, uh, we don't have any other leaves spawned in the video. So in order to solve it, we need to increase the um, values of the lifetime of the particle and uh, the value of the emission of the particle system to be as long as we need. So in this case, uh, in the timeline, I have uh, 250 frames. So I'm going to set the 
lifetime of the particle and the mission value to 250. Uh, in this way you will see that the particle system, the leaf on the floor, the leaves on the floor will not uh, disappear. Uh, we will have this kind of cool effort for the entire time. Third tutorial, we need to speed up because this third tutorial is composed by four parts and I call it a quick efforts. Quick efforts are like the name of the future that actually let me create this effort really quickly. By default, uh, you can just select something and apply one of the four efforts in the quick efforts menu and they will work just fine but I personally think it should be considered as a starting point to create a more complex particle system. So the first one is the quick effect of four. With this one, what I did was to select a plane or anything you want, and then go to object and in the top left corner and select quick effect. Then four, and then set a simple basic shader for the material. It's already working, but I think we can improve it. So in the particle settings, I selected the children and the, of the particles to be simple. And you can see that it's already a bit different, uh, more random. So after that, uh, I increase the threshold and size and random size of it. There is not a specific value, as you can see here, but um, let's not uh, exaggerate. So find the value that, it, that you think works well and it's looking good. Then uh, in clamping, I decreased the clamp to be 0 0.260, something like that, and increasing the shape to be 0 0.09. Last but not least, I enable the clamp noise and set it to 0 0.11. And that's done. You feel free to experiment with other values, but as you can see, the result is quite good and the grass is quite legit, I think. Now, the second one is the effect smoke. Um, for the smoke, I haven't done any changes. It really depends a lot on what you need to do and um, if I previously said that I, I was about to show you some variations, that's the exception that proved the rules because I just kept the default one. Because especially with smokes, uh, it um, depends a lot on what you need to do and the kind of smoke that you need. Um, just for you to know, you can create a smoke really quickly with a good result just selecting this effort. Then we go to the quick effect explode. For this one, we are gonna use SSN. Um, in particular, it works in relation to the subdivision of the model, destroying them in smaller part. So if you apply it to a simple cube, it will be divided in half. But with SSN, which actually has already a lot of subdivisions, um, it's gonna destroy in a more legit way. Um, we can even set the weight uh, of the pieces or even do some weight painting in order to avoid some parts to be destroyed. But by default, that's the result. You can even make it more interesting applying a solidify modifier to create some fitness on the following parts. Last but not least, we have the liquid effect. Here, the settings uh, are a bit more interesting and we have to do more changes. By default, you will see the shape of the object that you selected to be affected by the liquid effect. Um, are falling like in particles. So unless that's the uh, kind of effort you are looking for, we need to do some changes. So the first thing that I did was to select the object of the liquid effect and set the flow behavior for, to be from geometry to inflow in order to fill up something like a cup. So in this way, we will have a full constant flow of liquid, which is, I think, more interesting just of a geometry colliding became a liquid. Um, in order to see the preview of these uh, effects, we need to rebake the cache of the domain. So let's just let this uh, rectangular shape uh, object here, which has been generated by the liquid effect and is the domain. In this case, it's rectangular. We're going to use the default one, but it can be any shape, even a geometry, like a cup, for instance. And all we need to do is to change the cache set type to be O. Then check the mesh box and click on bake all. After a few seconds, you will see your simulation ready. There is already a basic uh, um, water shader applied, uh, just to give you an idea. And the result is really good. If you want to see something a bit more particular, um, maybe if you, you will remember a Coca-Cola cup uh, filling up a simulation that I did a few years ago. Uh, so if you want to, you can check this video because uh, actually I did the same uh, process, but the result is a bit more interesting. 
and that's all everybody i hope you like it this kind of quick tutorials done in a single video if so leave a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and let me know your thoughts on the comment below that's for you to know there are some special offers going on my cg trader so make sure to take a look you can find the link below thank you so much for watching and see you soon